What's going on YouTube? This is Mustafa Love with Hearthstone Media. Thank What's going on YouTube? This is Mustafa Love with Hearthstone Media. Thanks for tuning in again. But if this is your first time checking out the channel, please think about hitting the like or subscribe button to be notified the next time we make videos like this. I promise you that something like this won't happen to you if you hit the like or subscribe button. Or maybe it will if you don't. Without further ado, let's get to the video. So thanks for joining me again, guys. And if you didn't know by now, I am like a huge Star Wars fan, as you see. Well, through countless of my videos, you've seen Star Wars memorabilia strewn throughout my place. You see I got a couple of Baby Yoda, you know, some Star Wars merchandise. Um, as you have saw me, see me wearing just now, I have a Boba Fett helmet, which I do wear around the house often. Do not judge me. But one thing I haven't done much on this channel is talk about Star Wars and my love of Star Wars or the shows, the movies, and all the things I watch and have grown to love throughout my years. Uh, and as shown by a lot of the clothing I actually wear too. And link will be in the description if you want to purchase this awesome t-shirt. But I am also now a huge fan of the show The Mandalorian. So much so that I acquired some more beautiful, like, like another little trinket to have around. I don't know when I'm going to like open this or if I'm going to open this. I don't know if I'm going to keep this in box. But um, but yeah, this is a, it's a dope pop of the Mandalorian and the child. And I can't wait to display it. But I'm running out of display space in here. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. But I didn't talk about season one at all previously on my channel. But now we're in season two of the Mandalorian. And I felt let's have at it. So I've been kind of delaying my viewing process and staying completely out of the loop. I like to be surprised as much as possible when it comes down to watching, you know, shows that I know I'm going to watch or movies that I know I'm going to watch. I don't watch trailers. I don't watch, uh, you know, Up Next. I don't watch a lot of the, the talk or the chatter. I kind of stay off it. Even though I'm like a huge Star Wars fan, I stay off of all Star Wars media because I don't want anything to be spoiled to me. I want to go in as fresh as possible. So with that being said, I will say, guys, hey, spoilers ahead for episodes one, two, and three of season two of The Mandalorian. And if you haven't watched season one, I guess I'll be talking about some things in reference to season one. Now, you know The Mandalorian, but don't know The Mandalorian because everybody has seen these. These, 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 these. I'm just imagining I'm going to edit all of these memes in because there are a bazillion baby yoda or otherwise known as the child memes out there in social media i know plenty of people who know and love this character but have never watched the show mandalorian and if you haven't watched the show you are missing out on something because it is a great show it watches really easy because the episodes are very short actually too short in my opinion in the opinion of a lot of star wars fans but this season has not disappointed now for a quick quick backstory or a quick uh you know kind of recap of season one Season one left us with the Mandalorian clashing with a Moff Gideon, who is played by uh, Jesus God name some Esposito. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, played by played by this actor right here, who's uh, Moff Gideon. He plays a really menacing role as a Grand Moff of the fallen Imperial Empire. He is now in possession, as it was shown in the last uh, few frames or the last moments of the uh, uh, season finale of the Mandalorian, holding the dark saber, which is a fabled. Um, it's a fabled item or weapon in Star Wars lore. It was once uh, thought that the owner of the dark dark saber or the holder of the dark saber would uh, rule Mandalore, which is the uh, the world where the Mandalorian has titled the, the title character comes from. Um, it has been shown in the Star Wars uh, Rebels and the Clone Wars shows, but never uh, since shown on screen. This was the first time the dark saber made an appearance on screen and it also showed the end of season one with the man on a clear solid mission to return the child or as known uh lovingly as baby yoda to one of his kind so now that was probably the worst recap you ever gonna get on a on a season and maybe i'll preemptively go back and do a recap of season one but again if you if haven't watched season one streaming on disney plus uh definitely go watch uh season one of the mandalorian so now for those of you who are caught up and up to date now let's look at what we've gone in 
these first three episodes. One thing I will say, and, and hopefully I do more videos, I plan on doing more videos to get more detail in the actual episodes, but what I like about these episodes and what I like about what they're doing so far this season, they seem to always give you just enough, which leaves you a little on edge and maybe a little angst with the show, because they always give you just enough, but not enough. Or definitely not, not too much. Episode 1 gave us a hint of Boba Fett's return. And then it paid that off showing Boba Fett in the last frame of the episode. You know, some of us thought, and I, I thought in a sense, maybe Cobb Wenth played expertly by T Timothy Oliphant, who I had no idea had so much fanfare, even that his voice in a helmet was instantly rec recognizable. By so many people was like, oh my God, that's, Tip that's Timothy Oliphant. I was like, wow. I, I had no idea this man's voice and walk was that recognizable, but it was instantly recognizable to so many people who didn't like, you know, watch to see who was going to be playing the character. But I thought it was possibility that the show was leading the Mandalorian to Boba Fett. Teased it, but then didn't give it, but then paid it off at the end of the episode. We do see Boba Fett is alive and well and will make an appearance on this show. Now, some speculate that maybe the, the trooper that we saw could potentially be another clone trooper and not Boba Fett. I don't think that Jon Favreau, the creators of the show, would kind of like tease us like that, take us to the edge of the cliff just to drop us off. Like it'd be like dropping into a Sarlacc pit or, pit or something like that. So we have that. Boba Fett's coming. And this is what we're leading up to. Now we go into episode two. Episode two, I will have to say, and I'm going to go do a deep dive on this episode. because I'm seeing so many memes and so much talk about this, you know, episode two. Episode 2 was one of the most suspenseful the and hard to watch episodes of TV I've ever seen. Like it, it, it was it was heart wrenching and it was it had its sad moments. It had its, its very fearful moments. Like when when baby Yoda was eating this woman's or this character, the frog lady, as she was saying, eating the eggs, which had been, you know, spoken of the Jedi. last of her family's line. And they're showing Baby Yoda's character ha hazardly and almost for comic relief eating the eggs. I didn't know how far they were going to go with that. And I seen there was a lot of internet chatter from episode two. And I, and I, and I stayed away from it. But I didn't know if they were going to. I didn't know if he was going to eat all the eggs. The whole show I was on edge like you're taking this beloved character and definitely doing some things to to curb somebody's thought process of this beloved character. Cause if Baby Yoda eats all this 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 woman's eggs, how do you view that character then after? And I didn't know if that was gonna happen or not. Every time they left Baby Yoda alone, I thought it was a chance that he could eat all of the eggs. That was nerve-wracking for me. Like that was Dude, that was hard to watch. So then when they're trapped on the ship and it looked like they're, you know, he's, you know, the Mandalorian has been in some unescapable Place type situations go, go throughout this show. Some situation be like, okay, how's he going to get out of this? It's like seven minutes left in the episode, you know. And, you know, X-Wing X Machina saved him in, in episode two, as Cinema Sense would say it, X-Wing X Machina came in, swooped in, saved the day. But again, I did not see that coming. So kudos to Jon Favreau, who did write, and I think he's, ri he's written all the episodes in, in season two so far. And he's, he directed the first episode, The Later Groundwork. Peyton Reed, who you may or may not know if you're watching this this far, maybe you know who Peyton Reed is. But Peyton Reed is the director of Ant-Man. And he did a really good job with this, um, you know, with this episode. And I will say, one thing that this show has going for itself is spades and its directors. You know, from Bryce Dallas Howard, who directed the next episode, where I'll talk, I will talk about episode three, to Ta Taika Waititi, and again, Peyton Reed, and it's just been so many, John Favreau's done a good job. It's been, it's been some really good director, uh, directing and storytelling and story making on screen. And, and these episodes are starting to feel more and more like Star Wars as they start to connect this tissue. Now, when we go into episode three, you're really starting to feel that Star Wars lore. Like, if you know, the first season 
felt a lot like a Western in space, which Star Wars is touted to be. This felt more Western-y than space in the first season. But now coming into episode three, backing off of episode two, which again, I, I, I'm also liking the fact that these few episodes have picked up directly from the next. It wasn't a skip or a lapse in passage of time. It was like sputtering in space. I thought it was going to be a situation where he was just going to end up having delivered that woman and it was just going to be like another side quest like the first season was a bunch of side quests that kind of just worked themselves out and then he was on to the next side quest these episodes seem like a more cohesive connected unit and i'm enjoying that about the show so it picks up with them in more peril as he tries to land this broken beat up ship and again it's more tense moments with those eggs i keep coming back to the eggs and, you know, seeing the mother's protectiveness over the eggs, which I felt like she was a little bit lapsed in judgment in episode two. You know, leave me in your thoughts in the comments if you felt that too. To see her protectiveness over her eggs and, you know, the words. Like, in episode two, when she connected herself to that voice modulating robot for, for the robot to be able to talk to, to the Mandalorian. Oh, man. Like, that, her, her, her words through through the droid i tell you star wars when done right knows how to do stuff right her words talking through the droid and just seeing the 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 look on the the face of a frog character was very 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 heartwarming and you really felt you really felt it so the voice acting was great the effects were great you got two characters whose faces you can't see. Well, you can't see the Mandalorian's face, and then you got a frog lady. But that scene was very moving. I, I have to admit, it was very, very moving. So when you see her holding on to her eggs to brace them for impact and trying to hold on to help the ship land, it's like, man. And then the reunitement with um, her and, and, and her, her, her partner, her spouse, her husband. It was it was very 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 touching the way the trajectory of the last episode was going. I literally said to myself, this episode needed that because man, this episode needed to start off on that note. And then of course it completely takes a turn for the worse and the Mando gets trapped in a situation where the guy he's not going to be able to get out and bam, here comes the Star Wars action with the Mandalorians in action looking as bad as they ever did even more exciting than the season finale of, of of the first season they swoop in they kick ass and it's it's star wars and it, it it really for a fan it really brings you there it it shows you if you're a fan of the clone war series if you're a fan of rebels this was your moment like if you're a fan of the clone war series if you watch the clone wars and you're not watching the mandalorian i don't know what you're doing but this this brings it kind of full circle now you know not going to get too much into the episode just to say i really like the episode bryce dallas howard came back to direct another episode i think this might be her third in the series the directing was was awesome everything looked good the sound quality um to hear those star wars s sounds um it was there to see some mon calamari's walking around um, I forget what the other species is, the ones with the tentacles that look like the captain from Pirates of the Caribbean. And um, to see these characters interacting, I'm like, wow, this is Star Wars mixed with Waterworld. And I get why these type of, uh, you know, alien characters would, would be on this world that seems to be heavily, you know, relegated to, you know, aquatics. You know, I was like, oh, this makes sense. Because at first I thought they were in, on Mon, Mon Calamar, but I was like, wait, that wouldn't make sense. Because they did say they was going to a planet called Trash. And then when you see all the, the Mon Calamarians there, it was quite a few of them uh, on, on in, in part of this episode. So this episode, it gave me a lot. Um, it also left our main character with some things to wonder about. With all the things he's been, like, you know, brought to believe throughout his whole entire life about the code. You know, was it false? When he's seen Bo-Katan remove her helmets and all the other Mandalorians remove their helmets, of course, he initially thought you can't be true Mandalorians because you just remove your helmets. And the information that she gave him, I know it gave him something to think about. Is everything he's been taught a lie? 
you know, is she telling the truth? And it was just really interesting. I figured, I was wondering where is it going to lead the character? So now, where we're leading up to now. And this show gives us, yet again, just enough and not too much. Just enough to satiate us. Just enough to satisfy us. Not like Baby Yoda eating the eggs that he couldn't stop eating. That child is like a human garbage disposal on that show. It is hilarious. And with some hilarious moments in that show with him eating, the the similarities to the alien face hugger, I think that might have been a homage to that franchise. I really thought a face hugger was popping out of one of those eggs. And then he eats the bowl of soup and he gets another face hugger. I think that was a lot of, it was a lot of aliens, uh, you know, it was a lot of aliens fan service. But a lot of these things I'm seeing develop in the show, I don't feel like it's Star Wars fan service. Now, some people will say name dropping and, and, and Bo-Katan and, you know, and seeing a glimpse of both fa that fan service. No, that's a good show and a good cohesive unit. And I think Star Wars is taking some pages from Marvel where they're tying a lot of this stuff together. They're bringing in the lore of the Clone Wars. It's a very popular and long-running series. They're bringing some of that stuff in because a lot of people felt like in so many ways, how could so many things have happened in the Clone Wars and in those series that didn't affect the movies? You know, because I kind of felt like that. Like, how could all of this stuff happen and not affect the movies at all that have come out? And they expect us to believe that this world had existed and all these things had happened, but you've never seen any of them referenced in, you know, episode one, two, and three for the most part. And I think this series is starting to kind of fix that and bridge that gap. And it just reminds me, hey, it's a big ass galaxy out there. So, you know, I definitely get it now. So now for the next, you know, big thing, we've gotten the hint of Boba Fett, then we've got Boba Fett. Last season gave us the hint of the Dark Saber. Now it's more talk of the Dark Saber. You know, you had the, the, the Fable Mandalorians. We got the Mandalorians. Now we get another faction of the Mandalorians. You actually get the heiress, you know, who once sat on the throne of Mandalore. Now she's been introduced in the show. And actually, you know, the actress that plays her actually voiced her in the animated series, which I think is, a, a, and again, Disney keeps their people. So, you know, for, for them to bring that full circle and to have a, a voice actress that it was capable enough you know, to become the live action version of her voice acted character. It's awesome. It, it, I akin that to Paul Bettany's voices Jarvis then becoming the vision. I don't know if that was the forethought from the very beginning of the first Iron Man. I, I don't think they thought that far ahead, but Paul Bettany is a perfect vision. He was also perfect as the voice of Jarvis. You don't usually get that often when you can bridge those kind of gaps like that. That's that's just amazing, you know. So to have the same actress that voices the character in the cartoons and animated series play her in live action was great. She did a great job. So now that's the next thing that has been dropped upon us. And now we get the, the one. Now, again, if you're a huge Star Wars fan, if you're watching this long, you're probably a huge Star Wars fan. You probably knew this was coming, but I didn't because I stayed away from this information purposely. The Ahsoka Tan name drop was like, thank you. Thank you, Star Wars, Jon Favreau, and dare I say it, Kathleen Kennedy, because she's still an executive producer. But thank you for bridging all of these gaps, and now we will bring... Potentially, I don't know if it's going to happen next episode or is he going to get stymied on the way? Is something else going to happen? Because that's kind of the only aggravating part about the show. When he has a clear cut directive and you think he's going to the next place and then, you know, something happens with the ship. Something happens with that. He's got to refuel. And everybody wants a Mandalorian on their side. So every single person has a mission for him. But I get it. You know, I, I, I guess I get that. If you needed something done and uh, Mandalorian falls in your lap, hey, I need you to help me with this. So now we got Ahsoka Tan coming in. So now wh where else does that lead us? Like, where else does that lead us when now you have Boba Fett coming back? Now you have the Mandalorians in play. Now you have the heiress to the, to the Mandalorian throne and trying to reclaim her home world. Now you have Ahsoka Tan coming in. So now where else is this show gonna go and when is it going to culminate together? That definitely gives you something to wait for. And I don't know if this season is slated to be another eight episodes or I mean eight in total or is it going to stretch to ten. But I am very, 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 very much enthused to see how it plays out. 
hopefully I will be coming back with some more content, Star Wars related content. I got to do some more homework. I got to watch some more stuff and I got to re-engage in my fandom. I am never disconnected, but I will say some of the, you know, some of the things that have taken place, uh, you know, over the, over the past, I don't know, year or so have kind of, you know, I don't know. It's, 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 it's ruffled my feathers as they say, but again guys if you watched this long thank you very much please hit like subscribe button share this content out um leave something in the comments tell me what you want me to talk about if you're a star wars fan say star wars in the comments or something to let me know you are and again if you watch this long i really appreciate you guys um go check the link in the descriptions if you want to get some merch if you want to get a pop if you want to find a nice t-shirt i got links in the description for all of those things and i'm out Hey guys, thanks for watching. As always, if you like these videos, you can click my face here to subscribe or here to watch more videos. One.